Okay, so this video is going to be a little different. It's just going to be a voiceover, and I'll show you some of the footage that I shot out at Meteor Crater in Arizona, which is located just east of Flagstaff, Arizona. And I actually shot all this footage when I was moving out here from the Nashville, Tennessee area. So here's an image from the web that I found of Meteor Crater from the air. Here's another image from NASA of Meteor Crater. And here's the footage that I shot. So here I am just driving out to the crater. As you drive up to the crater, you can kind of see the rim there, so I thought that was kind of interesting. Walking up to one of the viewpoints, that's the visitor center right there, and the epic reveal of Meteor Crater. Definitely a spectacular sight when you first see it. Would highly recommend visiting this place if you're in the Flagstaff area, or if you're just traveling around Arizona and looking for things to do. This is kind of in between Phoenix and the Grand Canyon as well. And it's known as the world's best preserved meteorite impact site on Earth. It was created about 50,000 years ago, and it's also known as Canyon Diablo Crater or Behringer Crater, which was named after geologist Daniel Behringer, who was the first person to prove that the site was indeed created by a meteorite. Here's a view looking west towards the San Francisco peaks and Flagstaff area. That's actually the only road down to Meteor Crater right there. And look at this dude walking around doing his selfie shot. And you can just kind of see the track here. It's not like there's some epic hiking that you need to do. No need to bring the hiking poles or hiking boots on this. It's a really easy track. You can just do the whole thing in sandals if you want. I definitely recommend bringing some sunscreen and checking the weather conditions before you go. It can get really windy here, so just plan ahead and dress accordingly. I was there on a beautiful day in late April. They have an array of fixed telescopes that point to various places of interest within the canyon. So this is just an astronaut, a regular size six foot tall astronaut with the American flag. And they're really just trying to give you a sense of how big the crater is. So how big is it? It's actually three quarters of a mile across. It's 560 feet deep. Yeah, I really wanted to hike in there, but I do understand that they're protecting it for future generations. Yeah, just kind of curious. How long do you think it would take to get across the crater? I'm going to guess like 45 minutes, maybe an hour, if I had to walk like straight line through it. But yeah, that would be pretty cool. There's a lot of history to learn about here too. They have an Apollo test capsule that was used during the Apollo program, which is the program that took astronauts to the moon. And also the astronauts trained here in 1963. Here's like an old school photo that I found on the internet. But yeah, I actually read that one of the astronauts tore his spacesuit while they were doing some training in Meteor Crater, and this led to the development of a more robust material that they used in the spacesuit. I would also recommend taking the walking tour while you're there. If I remember correctly, it took about an hour, and it's along a really easy track. Now, an hour for everybody, I know that may or may not be easy so definitely just use your own judgment on whether or not you should do it but they take you to some more secluded viewpoints and obviously tell you more about the geology and history of the crater so I definitely felt like this was probably the highlight of Meteor Crater so that's another reason to go to Meteor Crater when the weather is good because they won't offer these tours if the weather conditions don't allow it but definitely bring your camera with you on this tour they take you to some really cool viewpoints. If you can't make the tour, I would definitely recommend spending as much time as you can inside the museum as it's really well done and there's a lot to learn about. They even have on display a fragment of the meteor that created Meteor Crater and I looked up how much this thing weighed. It actually weighs 1,406 pounds, which is 638 kilograms. And at the time of impact, it was coming in at a speed of about 29,000 miles per hour or 12.8 kilometers per second. One thing that I personally found interesting inside the museum is that they have a display that mentions Goss Bluff. The Goss Bluff impact crater is located really close to the Larapinta Trail, which for those of you who have been following this channel for a long time, know that I hiked that trail in 2016 while living in Australia on a one-year work and holiday visa. It's a beautiful little trail in Australia's red center, and I actually have a clip of myself pointing towards Goss Bluff. I don't know if you guys can see it, but on the horizon right there, there's these like small mountain ranges. That is an area called Goss Bluff. It was created by an impact from a comet about 140 million years ago, I think. So yeah, I'll uh, show you a picture of it here. But uh, I really wish I would have got there. You need a four wheel drive to get there though. So anyways, just thought I'd share that I was just really excited when I saw that Goss Bluff was 
represented here at Meteor Crater in Arizona. It's really humbling seeing this giant crater in person and learning about how it was created. I would highly recommend a visit here if you find yourself in the area. Let me know down below if you like this new voiceover style of video as I may do some more like it in the future. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.